For this video, I'm going to be taking a look at if it makes more sense to stop stacking one ounce silver coins here in the United Kingdom. Now this isn't clickbait, but it will take a little time to explain a few things and there are some caveats that will depend on your situation and your goals for silver stacking as well. But if you're not from the United Kingdom, a lot of this might not matter to you at all because of different tax laws in different countries. This is mainly because here in the United Kingdom, we are heavily incentivized to stack British minted silver from the Royal Mint because of the capital gains tax exemption. So we are pretty much pushed towards stacking Royal Mint silver where their one ounce silver coins are pretty bad for milk spotting to put it politely. Your exit strategy will also come into play with this but even then the numbers and the spreads available are still very very competitive to go with two or ten ounce silver coins instead of one ounce silver coins. If you're looking to exit via peer-to-peer -peer selling rather than selling to a dealer you might actually be a lot better off by going with two or ten ounce silver coins as well. The numbers for this video will presume that the two ounce silver coin premiums and ten ounce silver coin premiums for reselling will maintain moving forward. Personally, I do think the popularity of the Queen's Beast will taper off. But I think the Tudor Beasts and Queen Beasts silver coins will pretty much maintain it around the same as each other. Dealer buyback prices will also play into this heavily as well. And like I'll cover later in the video when I do some number crunching, literally within the last week, one of the major dealers here in the United Kingdom have dropped their buyback prices from spot plus 8% down to spot plus 5% for the two ounce silver coins. So the idea for this video came about due to three different conversations that I had with different people over the course of the last week. The first one was with my friend's dad. He is a gold stacker. He really isn't about silver. That's very common here in the United Kingdom due to the extra 20% tax we have to pay when buying first-hand silver. But he made an absolute killing on two ounce silver coins from the Queen Beast series. That's the only silver he stacked. It's usually sovereigns and one ounce gold. He was buying them and reselling them on on the peer to peer market and made a lot of money. The second conversation is with Martin from Silver Trader who is one of the better silver dealers here in the United Kingdom. And I was talking to him and he was mentioning how the one ounce silver coins from the Royal Mint tend to have a really, really bad issue with milk spotting. Whereas the two ounce silver coins and the 10 ounce silver coins don't really have that much of an issue in his experience. He is in a much better position than me to talk about that because he sees silver coins every single day. But even with my small amount of silver, it does still kind of back that up where one ounce silver coins turn to milk spot, my two ounces really don't. The third conversation that got me thinking about this was with one of my friends who recently tried to exit on some silver, selling it to one of the major dealers here in the United Kingdom, and they actually tried to play the numbers game and offer him lower than what their listed buyback price was because his silver was milk spotted. That really shouldn't matter in my opinion, and he actually paid the shipping for them to send that silver back to him. Then he sent it down to Atkinson's and they bought it at above the list price of the original dealer anyway without saying a word about the milk spotting. Now here in the UK the best way to buy silver by far is on the pre-owned margin scheme because the premiums are lower. It's usually around spot plus 50%. That might sound crazy from where, whichever country you are but because of taxes here that is pretty much the best deal you're going to get for one ounce of silver. Unfortunately though, that is not always available because it pretty much sells out as soon as they get those coins back in stock because it is the most cost efficient way to stack silver here. So a lot of people just go with current year Britannia's which is technically or generally thought of as the cheapest way to stack silver. Now with Atkinson's who is one of my preferred dealers for bullion here in the UK, you're usually looking at spot plus 65% for a one ounce silver Britannia. If you go with a two ounce Lion of England from the Tudor Beast series though, that will come in at spot plus 61%, already saved new 4%. Then you've got the numismatic collector side of it for additional value if you are looking to exit in a decade or something like that via a peer to peer sale. Then you have the 10 ounce line of England from the Tudor Beast series. I don't have one in front of me, but I am looking to buy one next month. That will usually be around spot plus 60%. So again, that's saving you 5%. Less of a chance of having problems with milk spotting. 
and has the collector side there to back it up in the future as well. Now you might think at this stage you will always get a better deal if you go with a 2 ounce or 10 ounce silver coin anyway because it is more silver being processed in the same machine action when stamping the coin, but this is not the case here. A lot of dealers in the United Kingdom will have a higher price for their one ounce silver Britannias and Atkinsons anyway, and then they'll have a much higher price for their two ounce or 10 ounce silver beast coins as well. So these numbers won't always work out from all dealers. Now when it comes to selling, this is where the spread really matters. And if you're going peer to peer to collectors, this is where you can make a lot more money. My personal silver exit strategy is via a bullion dealer. So right now with Atkinson's for a one ounce silver Britannia, that's post 2013, I'm looking at spot plus 10%. Because the Tudor B series is still quite new, they haven't got their list buyback prices for the Tudor B series yet. So I am just using the, the Queen's B series. But literally a few days ago when I did the original number crunchers for this video, their buyback for the two ounce silver Queen's B series was, was spot plus 8%. Right now it is currently spot plus 5%. Then when you go with the 10 ounce silver, it's pretty much the same as a one ounce Britannia coming in at spot plus 10%. And from what I've seen online, these tend to sell out very quickly because it's part of the VAT margin scheme. And because you're buying 10 ounces instead of one, the prices do tend to work out even better than going with pre-owned one ounce silver Britannias. So these are very popular. So even with the cheaper prices on the buy side of it for the two ounce line of England, with a spot plus 5% buyback, it is slightly worse off than a one ounce Britannia. But at the spot plus 8%, it's pretty much the same, but without the risks of milk spotting on your collector coins or with a reduced rate of milk spotting on your collector coins. Buying two or 10 ounce silver coins instead of one ounce silver coins will also depend on your situation moving forward as well, because a lot of people won't need to worry about the capital gains tax exemption when they sell their coins. It will depend on other investment vehicles you have available to you. Like I mentioned earlier, my friend's dad actually would have had issues with capital gains tax if he hadn't been using British minted silver coins when he was flipping the Queen's Beast series. So it can surprisingly come into play depending on your situation. So right now the 20% VAT on the two ounce line of England is around £9.33. pence. That does sound like a lot and to be fair it is considering it is an investment grade 3.9 silver product. And personally I think it's ridiculous that we get taxed on investment grade silver. But if you really do believe in the bull case for silver and hands up I really don't. I collect silver, I don't stack it. I really don't believe the bull cases out there for silver are even close to accurate. A lot of people believe it. And if those potential gains are realized, being exempt from capital gains tax is going to help you out a ton instead of just paying 20% on your actual purchase because the capital gains tax can be considerably bigger if the silver bull case is correct. That brings the video to a close. Hopefully it was helpful. I know I rambled a bit there, but I do think that it's important that people in the UK factor things like this in or at least consider them because our one ounce silver coins, the Britannias, they really do milk spot even if you're have it out of the capsule for a small amount of time, it's a pain. But moving forward, it could be a lot better to just go with two ounce or 10 ounce silver coins. Like I said, next month's silver purchase is gonna be at least one 10 ounce silver coin to get one into my collection. And then moving forward, I might just drop one ounce silver Britannias anyway and go with two ounce Tudor Beast coins and 10 ounce Tudor Beast coins. So thanks for watching guys and have a good day.